request. I send the response. I process the order. The sequential, uh, for the sequential shape is terminated. My process is terminated. Now, again, anybody who knows BizTalk or done BizTalk development will notice some, I will say some, but not many uh, similarities. BizTalk is much powerful, but now you have drag. Now you, you are being able to step inside your business process after it has done and see what's happening, what happened inside your business process. Okay? Okay, so that was the, uh, let's say, the easy flow where everything went okay. I have a service. I requested that service. I get the response back, and life is good. However, let's now take it one more step. Let's talk about persistence. So I will give you this scenario. My WF service is calling the WCF. My WCF is down. Okay, so think about it. I have a business process to accept POs from customers. They submit the PO for me. It's inside my business process. My business process, for the customer, everything is done. He has submitted the PO, and he continues his life normally. Now, the request inside is inside the PO. Inside my PO, I'm calling the WCF service, which let's say is a bank service. So I take the PO data from my customer, and take the, let's say, bank account ID, and hit a WCF service from the bank. Now the bank service is down. Without App Fabric doing traditional development, you're in a big, big trouble. Okay, because unless you do some deep code customization, asynchronous calling, whatever, you have no way to know what happened, what, what went wrong. So let me simulate that. I will go to the Hello Service project. This is the Hello Service project, is a WCF service. Okay? This is the bank service for you. I will stop the application from IS. Okay? So, I will stop the application. Now I will go to Visual Studio and do some, I mean, one tiny trick. In the send response shape here, there's a property called persist before send. I will select it. What does this pers persist before send mean? OK, persist means, I mean, talking in general terms, persist means taking something, serializing that something, and storing it into a medium. Now, in my case, that, some, that, that something is a WF instance, and that medium is SQL Server. So basically, what I'm doing here is I'm telling WF Engine that just before sending the response back, you know that message it appeared at the console, your process, your order ID is being processed. That's the response. What I'm saying now is that just before sending that response, store the instance for me in the database. OK? Does that make sense? Does it? OK. So why is that? Why do I, what do I need from this? Now, when a failure happens inside my business process, there is a point to resume. Because if my process is in the memory all the time, if something wrong happens, that's I missed it, I'm done. It's in the memory. However, if I store it inside that, that database, now I have a way to go and say, you know, the bank service, this one, the process order, final shape, at that time it was done. Fine, my business process has failed. However, now, using the persistence property, when I know that the bank service is up again, I can go and say, you know what? Get me that instance which failed and resume it. Okay, and again, for, w, for uh, web service developers, this is a huge. I mean, I, I can see you're all, all excited and non-sleepy and, okay? So, let's build the service. And for some reasons on my machine, I will just recycle the application domain. That's not App Fabric related. That's my machine feature. I will empty the database clear uh, just to make the results clear for you. Open the app fabric. OK, everything is zeros again, right? I'm starting clean. So let's do the same process again now. I go to my client and create a new instance. So I stop the service, right? Why is it working? Anyone? No, WCF service is down. I stopped the application. 
Sorry? No. Yes. My WF service is still running. Now, under, I mean, again, remember the scenario. This console application, this one, is calling the WF service. WF service is running. I have no problem in that. And this is the tricky situation here. However, inside my, w, my WF service, which is, which is my business process, there is a point of failure, which is the WCF call. But the client don't know about it. So this is the tricky situation. This is what App Fabric will solve for you. So that's why for the client, I get the message that, you know, your order is under process. And that's what I need to see. I cannot tell what's happening inside the business process. However, now as a developer, I know that there is a failure inside my business process. The failure being the WCF service, my bank service between codes, is down. Okay? Let's see what happened inside App Fabric now. I will refresh the App Fabric dashboard. And I will take you to the persistence tab. Now inside the persistence tab, I have one suspended instance. Why is that? Because I have instructed my WF engine by checking that checkbox that just before doing the send, persist my instance inside the database. So if I click on it now, you will see that my instance is suspended. OK? Now let me go back to the dashboard. And as you can see here, I have, sorry, I want to show it to you, a non-recovered instance, which is my instance. right? So my instance is in a non-recovered state. There's a problem. But it's persisted inside the database. Now the super cool thing that I can do, I will go to my WCF service and start. OK? I will start my service. So now, talking business again, my service is up. OK? My service, bank service is up. However, there is a business process which is pending. So what I can do is that, again, I will go to the App Fabric dashboard and do something very cool, which is I do right click, and I can select Resume. OK? When I select Resume, the App Fabric engine, or App Fabric, it's, it's a Windows service, actually. It will go check that my WCF service now is up. And because I persisted my instance inside the database, I will be able now to go get back that instance, which was failed, take it, resume it from the point of failure. OK? So I will refresh here, and you will notice that this, this record has disappeared. So go back to the App Fabric dashboard. No more suspended instances. It has resumed. And now it has moved from the non-recovered state to the recovered state. OK? So let's again use the monitoring feature just to understand what happened. Right click and view tracked, inst tracked events. And as you can see here, the flow of my events. OK? And you see here the error. This is where my, my error, oops. OK. This is where my error happened. This is the moment where the WCF was down. And the engine, the WF engine, tracked that error. And it has persisted my instance inside the database. So that later, when the WCF service was up, I was able to continue my business process, and everything is done. OK? OK, questions? Yes, please. I have many questions. Many questions? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's why I said the questions. Okay. <laughs> there is, uh, if there has been a request, happens at this point that the WCF service has failed. OK? OK. Uh, it will show me any requests that fail. Is there any way can I distinguish between uh, the request is for uh, any customer? Yes. Something like this? I will keep that to the second demo. OK. OK? Uh, second, uh, add fabric. You do something that create that way. Yes. I don't know. Is this uh, <coughs> fabric, add fabric have SQL Server database? So yes. The, the persistence.